Welcome to Options 101 Terminology and Basic Concepts, brought to you by TradeRightly.com. This is part five of the Options 101 video series. If you haven't caught the previous parts, please uh, go watch those first, as this won't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, you can check out the TradeRightly YouTube channel or uh, go to TradeRightly.com to get access to those courses. So today in part five, we're gonna talk about option chains. Uh, options are listed in option chains. That is when we go to purchase or sell, uh, where we're executing our trades, we are looking at options in what are called chains. Uh, and it's a lot harder to explain than it is to just show you. So we're gonna go over to a broker and look at an option chain. This is Options Express, one of the brokers uh, we use. Uh, most of my future examples and instruction are gonna be done in another platform, but I really like the way Options Express shows their chains in terms of simplicity. Uh, you can see there's a lot going on here on this screen already, um, but believe it or not, this is actually the uh, not it's the least overwhelming of the uh, different option chain listings. So uh, I'm gonna take a look at Apple. You can see I have Apple listed as my symbol. I've got some specific criteria for how I want to look at the chain. We're not gonna go into that just yet. I wanna show you uh, how the chain is structured so that we can look at that in terms of um, some of the other things we want to talk about. So I have, uh, this is the, the chain actually down here. The first thing I want to point out to uh, with a chain is that it's split in half. The split down the center of this column that lists the strike prices. On the left side of the chart are listed all the calls and on the right side of the chart are listed all the puts. And down the center of the chart is the strike price starting from the very lowest that's available. Um, now, there are several here listed right now. I'm shooting this video on August 9th, and uh, the most current options that are available are the August week two options, but they expire today. So if I expanded that chart, um, there isn't a whole lot of information in these charts because they expire so quickly. So I wanted to look at the next options that expire out, and those are actually the monthly the August monthlies that expire in the third week, um, and they expire next Friday, so they have seven days to expiration. So at the top of the chart is the current price of Apple, what it's currently trading at right at the time I loaded this chart, it was $456.05. The options are listed, they go in ascending order from a low of 200 up to a high, let's scroll all the way down, a high of 670. Uh, but Apple is currently trading between 455 and 460, uh, which is indicated by the switching of the side that's shaded. We're going to talk about more what that shading means uh, later. But the key concept I wanted to get you on um, right now is you can see these columns at the top, last change, bid, ask, implied volatility, delta, and action. They repeat themselves uh, on the put side as well. So you have the same type of information listed for both calls and puts. And so what you may not have intuitively realized before is, say we're looking at a strike price of 230. There is both calls of it. There are calls available at 230 and there are puts available at a strike price of 230. So for every strike price, uh, in this case, they go up by fives. Uh, there are different increments for other stocks, but Apple does an increment of five. There are both calls and puts available for any given strike price. Now, we're going to spend most of our time worrying about what is the difference between bid and ask prices. So let's define those. If we're looking at the calls, the bid 
price is the uh, price that buyers on the market are currently willing to pay to purchase that option. So let's go back to our example of 230. Buyers are currently willing to pay $225.50 for uh, the option uh, price for a strike price of 230. Uh, ask is the price that buyers are currently, I'm sorry, that sellers are currently selling their options for. So if someone is, if you were selling an option, uh, a 230 Apple option, this one, you uh, would likely be asking for 226.80. That's what the going market rate is. Um, and then how that transaction actually happens between a buyer and a seller might actually occur somewhere in between these two numbers. But uh, if you just think about the different roles, this is what buyers are saying they're willing to pay, and this is what sellers are asking for. Uh, you might meet in the middle somewhere. So that's it for this episode of Options 101. For more information on how you can beat the pants off the market, visit TradeRightly.com.